Hello viewers, welcome to Newsweek South Asia, a show where we will provide you with fresh insights into South Asia's geopolitical, strategic and security situations. Let's take a look at the headlines first. Blast in Pakistan's Khyber Pakhtunkhwa kills 23 army personnel. State investigative agency in Kashmir executes raid on five locations. And India pays tribute to martyrs on 22nd anniversary of deadly parliament attack. Pakistan is a country which has a long history of supporting, protecting and harboring terrorism within its boundaries. However, Islamabad is now sampling the taste of its own medicine. The country suffers a streak of terror attacks in several parts, including the province of Khyber Pakhtunkhwa, bordering the Taliban-ruled Afghanistan. A total security collapse in Pakistan is imminent now, as defense personnel of Pakistan are now live targets for terrorists. A report. What seems to be a heat vision goggle speed of a gunfire between two parties is a video released by a terror outfit when its sniper was killing Pakistan's army personnel. The video was recently released by the terror organization Tehreek e Jihad Pakistan or TJP, an offshoot of an even bigger terror threat called the TTP or Tehreek e Taliban Pakistan. This time, the attack was targeted at an army post in Daraban town of Dera Ismail Khan in Khyber Pakhtunkhwa, killing at least 23 Pakistani defense personnel. The TJP, who took the responsibility behind the most recent KPK terror attack, currently has its stronghold in Pakistan's northwestern province. Islamabad, which has been a safe haven for international terrorists, now seems incapable of defending itself. According to some experts, many of these terror attacks in KPK are rather linked to a political agenda. Tariqa Taliban Pakistan is basically the uh, having affiliation with the uh, Tariqa Pakistan Insaf Party of Imran Khan. They are, this was uh, Taliban, as you know, was made. The father of Taliban was uh, General Hamid Gul. Hamid Gul is the vice president of the party. Now, what has happened is the army and the political establishment, they have tried to fix Imran Khan. And one of the reasons is that all these attacks are behind that, that these people do not want that Imran Khan should get the death penalty. Like Miyawali Air Base was attacked, they, that offshoot is again of a TTP. So this will carry on till such time Imran Khan does not get free from the cases or if he is say sentenced to death in the cipher case, there will be a total anarchy in Pakistan. The fact remains that Terrorists do not refrain from harming the common public in these violent incidents and the people of KPK now continuously live in fear of being attacked by terrorists. Previously, a similar terror attack of suicide bombing was witnessed in a mosque in Khyber Pakhtunkhwa's Hangu city, resulting in the death of at least five people. In the same incident, several had died due to being buried alive under the debris. Since the forceful takeover of the Taliban in Afghanistan, these attacks have been the new reality of the province and its people. However, the blame game between Afghanistan and Pakistan continues as the current regime of Pakistan repeatedly blames Taliban for orchestrating terror attacks, getting straight denials in response. A recent statement released by the Foreign Ministry of Pakistan carried a similar tone of condemnation for the latest terror attack in Khyber Pakhtunkhwa. The statement also demanded a thorough investigation from the Afghan government, demanding strict action against the ones who are responsible. But the ongoing streak of terror attacks still clearly tells that the number of terror attacks will not decrease any time soon.
Taliban was created by Pakistan and CIA. Now, this is the same Taliban which is now ruling Afghanistan. TTP, the Tehrike Taliban, Pakistan was an offshoot of this. They have very close links with each other. If you remember, these people have refused to acknowledge the Durand line in Pakistan because they want free movement of their own people over there and this entire area that is there, Khyber Pakhtun and Afghanistan, they consider it as their own. So, these links are there very much and whatever Afghan Taliban may say, these people are supported by them because they facilitate easy movement across the border for them so that they can escape and all this is again being orchestrated because of this reason only. Pakistan now harvests what it has been sowing for India for a long time. At this time, Islamabad is the one receiving severe blows because of cross-border terrorism orchestrated by a neighboring country. And the ultimate sufferer in this is the country's common public. Jammu and Kashmir, the defense forces here are leaving no stone unturned in pursuit of the ongoing crackdown on terrorism. In the most recent developments, the state investigative agency in JNK conducted raids and search operations in the Kashmir area related to an ongoing terror funding case. These raids are yet another addition to New Delhi's efforts of countering and eradicating even the last traces of active terrorism from the Union territory. Let's delve into the matter in this report. Pakistan, for a long time, has the intent of disrupting peace and tranquility in Jammu and Kashmir. However, the defense forces and intelligence agencies of India ensure that all the attempts made by Islamabad to propagate cross-border terrorism are stopped at any cost. Continuing these efforts, the State Investigative Agency of JNK recently conducted raids on various locations in Anantanag and Kulgam district in Kashmir. These raids were executed in relation to an ongoing terror funding case against Zafar Hussain Bhatt, also known as Khurshid Kashmiri. Khurshid has been declared an individual terrorist under the Unlawful Activities Prevention Act since October 2020. He has been reported to be associated with Pakistan-based terror organization Hizbul Mujahideen. Hence, New Delhi is adapting every possible tactic to continue its crackdown on terrorism and terror funding. Combating terror funding is a multifaceted challenge and requires a coordinated effort from not only security forces but also intelligence agencies and government state as uh, state as well as central government. We should ensure that countries all over the world do not supply money for the terrorist activities and there are laws uh, uh, which stop money, uh, stop countries from funding terror organizations in other countries. Also, you have what is called as the FATA Financial Action Task Force of the United Nations which keeps a tag of countries which support uh, terrorists with money. Then uh, we should also, uh, we also have what is called as our financial intelligence units which keep a tag of money transactions that take place and ensure that uh, wrong activities do not take place. We have a lot of laws on money laundering, for stopping hawala, etc. Uh, a lot of organizations which are involved in these kind of jobs, they are, regu uh, they are uh, regularly raided by the national investigative agencies. Their assets are frozen, their money is, uh, see, taken, uh, is seized and all their activities are tried to be stopped. Similar raids were conducted by NIA this year in Kukwara of North Kashmir, resulting the seizure and attachment of properties of Zahur Ahmed Shah Watali. Last year, major actions were also taken against Yasin Malik, a separatist leader from Jammu and Kashmir, when he was produced before NIA court in Delhi. Act of terrorism, especially in this time of the year, is Islamabad's last attempt of giving terrorism in JNK one last push. 
before the border areas get blocked due to harsh winter of months and the terrorists residing in Pakistan are unable to reach and send resources to the foot soldiers in Jammu and Kashmir. But India has taken several steps to ensure that terrorism cannot disturb the peace in JNK. Crushing terrorism will require a multifaceted effort. First and most important is intelligence gathering. We have to ensure that we get actionable intelligence by which uh, we come to know which terrorist group is going to infiltrate from which part of the line of control. We also have to ensure that our counter infiltration grid, which is on the border, uh, on the LOC, is of a very high order so that most of the, ter most of the terrorist uh, terror activities are stopped on the border itself and most of the terrorists are killed on the border itself. In fact, Indian Army has achieved tremendous amount of success in this activity in which 95% of terrorists get killed on the border itself and barely 5% are able to infiltrate inside. The counter infiltration grid has to be kept strong at all times. Based on actionable intelligence, we carry out intelligence based operation which is done very regularly. In fact, it is now said that there are barely 150 terrorists which are operating in Jammu and Kashmir Valley as well as in the area of Punch and Rajori. As a result of combined efforts and an impeccable coordination between state and national investigative and intelligence agencies, the ongoing crackdown on terrorism in India is expected to get severe by the day. Disruption of peace and security in Jammu and Kashmir has always been intended by Pakistan. But the unprecedented development in Jammu and Kashmir in recent years has proven India's will to secure and ensure that the peace, security and prosperity remains eternal. Twenty-two years ago in 2001, the Temple of Democracy in India was attacked by the suicide squad of terrorists of jaish e mohammed and lashkar e taiba five terrorists stormed the parliament complex in new delhi and detonated explosive and hurled grenades six delhi police personnel and three government staff were died in the attack on the anniversary of the attack on december 13 parliamentarians family members and soldiers paid tribute to those who lost their lives on december 13 2001 five terrorists belonging to terror outfit lashkar e taiba in jaish e mohammed stormed the parliament complex in New Delhi. Fourteen people, including five terrorists, six Delhi police personnel and three government staff died in the attack. It was reported that the terrorists were carrying AK-47 rifles, grenade launchers and pistols. Terrorists who detonated explosives and hurled grenades had intended to assassinate top political figures. Mohammad Afzal Guru, a former Jammu and Kashmir Liberation Front militant was later convicted of helping organize arms for the gunmen and a place for them to stay. He was hanged in February 2013. December 13, 2023 marked 22 years to the attack on parliament by terrorist groups linked to Pakistan. On the anniversary of the attack, parliamentarians, family members and soldiers paid tribute to those who lost their lives. Prime Minister Narendra Modi, Lok Sabha Speaker Om Birla and other leaders observed a minute's silence at the parliament. PM Modi also engaged in conversations with the families of the martyrs, notably with the children who had assembled for the ceremony on a chilly morning. Parliament ko बचाने के लिए जो हमारे कार, कार्मिकों ने जो बलिदान दिया उसको श्रद्धांजलि देने के लिए हम यहां आए थे उनके परिवार के लोग भी थे और हमने सबने श्रद्धांजलि दी है न्यू दिल्ली वाज नॉट द ओनली प्लेस वेयर द पार्लियामेंट अटैक हैड एन इंपैक्ट द एपिसोड नियरली ब्रॉट पाकिस्तान एंड इंडिया टू द वर्ज ऑफ वॉर the two terror organizations, Lashkar e Taiba and Jaish e Mohammed, who were involved in the attack, were already known to derive their support and patronage from Park ISI. 
All the five terrorists who formed the suicide squad during attack were found to be Pakistani nationals. As part of its diplomatic response, India banned civilian flights from Pakistan and recalled its High Commissioner. सदन को बचाने के लिए और हर सदस्य को बचाने के लिए जिन्होंने अपने सीने पर गोलियां झेली आज मैं उनको भी नमन करता हूं हमारे बीच नहीं है लेकिन उन्होंने बहुत बड़ी रक्षा की है Terrorism takes the center stage when it comes to India-Pakistan confrontation. Pakistan has always provided safe haven for terrorists to threaten Indian and international security. Pakistan thinks that terrorism is a low-cost way to fight and bleed India. This is the reason why terrorists like Jashi Muhammad Chief Masood Azhar Alwi, who orchestrated the parliament attack, live under the safe custody of Pakistan's deep state. Pakistan is widely regarded as a hotbed of terrorism. However, the use of terrorism as a form of state policy has proven to be costly for Pakistan in the long run. As per reports, Pakistan recorded the second largest increase in terrorism-related deaths worldwide in 2022. Pakistan's economy has experienced a sharp decline in recent decades and there is little foreign investment coming into the country from developed countries. Let's again move to Pakistan, where grave human rights violations continue in the form of enforced disappearances, torture, crackdowns on peaceful protests or attacks against journalists. Those who demand their fundamental rights are facing persecution at the hands of security agencies and Islamic fundamentalists. Recently, a prominent Pakistani rights activist, Manzoor Pashtun, was arrested after allegedly being abducted by security forces. Pashtuns held worldwide protests to demand release of Manzoor Pashtun, chief of Pashtun Tahafuz movement. Protests were organized in the US, Germany, Austria, France and other parts of the world, a report. Pakistan is known for widespread discrimination against religious minorities with attacks against Christians, Hindus and Sikh communities being widespread. However, in the Islamic Republic of Pakistan, even Muslims are not safe. Grave human rights violations in Pakistan include enforced disappearances, torture, crackdowns on peaceful protests or attacks against journalists. Those who demand their fundamental rights are facing persecution at the hands of security agencies and Islamic fundamentalists. Recently, a prominent Pakistani rights activist, Manzoor Pashtin, was arrested after allegedly being abducted by security forces. Pashtuns held worldwide protests to demand release of Manzoor Pashtin, chief of Pashtun Tahafuz movement. Protests were organized in the US, Germany, Austria, France and other parts of the world. Who is the, sponsor of terrorism? the protesters were seen shouting slogans like Pakistan is killing, the world is watching. Pakistan is killing, the world is watching. Stop the Pashtun genocide and free free Mansoor Pashtin. PTM member Fazalul Rahman Afridi lambasted the Pakistani military establishment for trying to stifle the freedom of expression and their right to peaceful assembly. The Pakistani military establishment uh, is, you know, forcefully trying to stifle our freedom of expression and our right to peaceful assembly, uh, but they cannot stop us, um, you know, around the world. Uh, they can stifle our freedom of expression in Pakistan, but they cannot stifle our freedom around the world because we are living in free world. These generals, the uh, Chief of Army Staff, General Asim Munir, the DGISI, General Nadeem Anjum, 
they are responsible for war crimes and crimes against humanity including enforced disappearances extrajudicial killings torture and genocide of the pashtun people Baloch and Pashtun political activists have raised the growing issue of enforced disappearances in Balochistan and Khyber Pakhtunkhwa in the United Nations Human Rights Council. Even though the successive governments in Pakistan have promised to make the practice illegal, people are still being forcibly vanished with impunity. Numerous activists, journalists and intellectuals have been reported missing allegedly abducted by security forces or intelligence agencies according to human rights organizations such cases have been substantial reports have emerged on extrajudicial killings carried out by security forces in pakistan thousands of cases of enforced disappearances remain unresolved in pakistan we want the international community to try them before the international criminal court because they are violating uh, the international law they are violating uh, the universal declaration of human rights and the united nation charter so pakistan is doesn't deserve to be the member of the united nations as we stand uh, before the united nation human rights council Pakistan is on the verge of collapse not just economically but socially as well and the voices of dissent are growing strong Three of Pakistan's provinces Sindh Balochistan and Khyber Pakhtunkhwa still remain underdeveloped where poverty and malnutrition are rampant The government does not appear to make any effort to upgrade the educational and medical infrastructure According to World Bank nearly 40% of Pakistani live below poverty line Pakistani government however does not care about all these things the sitting rulers in Islamabad and the army officials have nothing else to do except torturing people And with that We come to the end of this edition of Newsweek South Asia. We'll be back next week with more news, views and analysis from the subcontinent. Meanwhile, do keep writing to us at nwsa@ani.com. This is Pratiksha Mishra signing off on behalf of the entire production team of Newsweek South Asia. Goodbye and take care.